day 22, Exodus 4 through 6, Galatians 6. Uh, let's get into it. Exodus 4, Then Moses answered, But behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A staff. And he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to Moses, Put, on your, put out your hand and catch it by the tail. So he put out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Again the Lord said to him, Put your hand inside your cloak. And he put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous, like snow. Then God said, Put your hand back inside your cloak. So he put his hand back inside his cloak, and we took it out. Behold, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. If they will not believe you, God said, or listen to the first sign, may they believe the latter sign. If they will not believe even these two signs or listen to your voice, you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. And the water that you shall take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore, go, and I will be with you in your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. But he said, O my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you both what to do. He shall speak for you to the people and he shall be your mouth and you shall be as God to him. And take in your hand this staff with which you shall do the signs. Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go back to my brothers in Egypt to see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go back to Egypt for all the men who are seeking your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons and had them ride on a donkey and went back to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the staff of God in his hand. And the Lord said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you do before Pharaoh all the miracles I have put in your power. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. And I say to you, Let my son go that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, I will kill your firstborn son. At a lodging place on the way, the Lord met him and sought to put him to death. Then Zipporah took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched Moses' feet with it and said, Surely you are a bridegroom bridegroom of blood to me. So he let him alone. It was then said that she said, It was then that she said, A bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him at the mountain of God and kissed him. And Moses took told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him to speak and all the signs that he had commanded him to do. Then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the people of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the people of Israel and that he had seen their affliction, affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. Exodus 5. After Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. But the Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their foremen, You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks that they made in the past you shall impose on them, and you shall by no means reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, Let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men, so that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. So the taskmasters and the foremen of the people went out and said to the people, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go and get your straw yourselves wherever you can find it, but your work will not be reduced in the least. So the people were scattered throughout the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. 
The taskmasters were urgent, saying, Complete your work, your daily task, each day, as when there was straw. And the four men of the people of Israel, with whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and asked, Why have you not done all of your task of making bricks today and yesterday, as in the past? Then the four men of the people of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, Why do you treat, us, why do you treat your servants like this? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, Make bricks. And behold, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle, you are idle. That is why you say, Let us go sacrifice to the Lord. Go now and work. No straw will be given to you, but you must still deliver the same number of bricks. The four men of the people of Israel saw that they were in trouble when they said, You shall by no means reduce your number of bricks, your daily task each day. They met Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them as they came out from Pharaoh. And they said to them, The Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to his people, and you have not delivered your people at all. Exodus 6. But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand you will send them out, and with a strong hand you will drive them out of his land. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan and the land in which they lived as sojourners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has brought, out, brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. So the Lord said to Moses, Go in, tell Pharaoh king of Egypt to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But Moses said to the Lord, Behold, the people of Israel have not listened to me. How then shall Pharaoh listen to me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a charge about the people of Israel and about the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to bring the people out of Israel, to bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their fathers, Houses, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, Hanuk, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. These are the clans of Reuben. The sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jakin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son of a Canaanite woman. These are the clans of Simeon. These are the names of the sons of Levi according to their generations. Gershon, Kohath, Merari, the years of life of Levi being 137 years. The sons of Gershon, Libni, and Shimei by their clans. The sons of Kohath. Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Oziel, the years of the life of Kohath being 133 years. The sons of Merari, Mali, and Mushi, these are the clans of the Levites according to their generations. Amram took his wife Jochebed, his father's sister, and she bore him Aaron and Moses, the years of the life of Amram being 137 years. The sons of Izhar, Korah, Nepheg, and Zikri. The sons of Oziel, Mishael, Elzapan, and Sithri. Aaron took as his wife Elisheba, the daughter of Aminadab, the sister of Nashon, and she bore to him Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, the sons of Korah, Asir, Elkanah, and Ab Abiasaph. <laughs> These are the clans of the Korashites. Eleazar, Aaron's son, took as his wife one of the daughters of Pudiel, and she bore him Phineas. These are the heads of the fathers of fathers' houses of the Levites by their clans. These are the Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out the people of Israel from the land of Egypt by their hosts. It was they who spoke to the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, about bringing out the people of Israel from Egypt, this Moses and this Aaron. On the day when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, the Lord said to Moses, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you. But Moses said to the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips. How will Pharaoh listen to me? Galatians 6. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you be too tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. 
but let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who has taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will, reap, will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised, and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised, that they may boast in your flesh. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. Okay, so that is the end of Galatians. Um, but talking about that Exodus passage, this is um, a kind of a landmark moment in the Old Testament because this is when God makes himself known to his people. He's saying, I am the Lord. Like, I am, this is the Lord. This is the God that was doing things up until this point, And he's saying, I am that God, right? Uh, because the patriarchs had known God as God, like God Almighty, but they never knew the name of God, right? But now God is revealing himself to the people. Um, and now he's promising deliverance, even though, He's going to harden Pharaoh's heart. He's going to eventually uh, make Pharaoh release the people of Egypt. And the reason that he hardens Pharaoh's heart, I think, is to show his sovereignty. Because if God were to, if Pharaoh were to harden his own heart and God were to send plagues until Pharaoh softened his own heart, then God would have no sovereignty. Because then he's doing stuff and like, hoping that it would work. But when God hardens Pharaoh's heart and then sends plagues and then God softens his heart, that shows that God is sovereign. It shows that God is in control of the entire situation. It shows that the, the, the Israelites being in, in captivity to Egyptians is part of the plan, right? It shows that by only through God, only through faith in God, is Israel anything. They're nothing without God, right? And so like, yeah, that's why it says that God hardens Pharaoh's heart and not Pharaoh like hardened his own heart. It's not like, like Pharaoh still had free will. We still have free will. That's not a question. Like we definitely do. But God does things through his sovereignty in accordance with our will that we can't explain with our minds. This is an issue that I've debated with my friend for a while and I've talked with my dad for a while. And I don't know. Uh, it actually like literally just clicked uh, in the last 30 seconds while I was explaining it. Um, anyway, but I don't think it can fully like un we can't understand it because it just doesn't make sense that God can be sovereign and like do stuff, but we still completely have free will. But that's how it is. Anyway, Galatians 6. Um, this is big for me. Paul is saying don't be prideful, right? Arrogance is a sin that I struggle with, arguably, I don't know why I'm saying arguably, but probably the sin that I struggle with the most, I'm just naturally very arrogant. I think I'm very good at things, and I make it known, usually. This evening, I cooked chicken for my brother and me because my parents are out of town, and I thought I was insane at cooking because I cooked chicken once, and it was really good, and I cooked it th tonight, and it didn't cook all the way through. And so I had to recook it, and it still didn't cook all the way through. And so I recooked it again just for my brother because I didn't have time to do it for myself. And it finally worked. And I'm freaking pissed, right? Because, because I'm arrogant, because I thought I was good at cooking. But I'm not good at cooking. <laughs> and, you know, it's weird because the last time I made chicken... Okay, this is so stupid, but I think, I think it's God telling me something. 
Because the last time I made chicken, it worked out. It was really good. And I said, I said these words literally in my vlog. Like you can watch it, the golf vlog. I said, God shouldn't have let the chicken be good because now I think I'm it cracked at cooking or something like that, right? Dude, I cooked the chicken for like 40 minutes today and it wasn't cooked all the way through. And I think I have salmonella, right? That's God. Like it's so petty, but it's like one little thing of my arrogance. Whoa, wait, okay. So I, um, I think that is God. Anyway, Paul is speaking about arrogance and he's saying that we reap what we sow and when we sow things um, from the flesh, we reap corruption. But when we sow the spirit, we reap eternal life. So let's not grow weary of doing good. But like specifically arrogance, like when we put faith in our own human condition by sowing flesh, we reap corruption, we become corrupt, right? It's not the things that go into us that defile us, but the things that come out of us. And arrogance is something that exudes out of a person. Um, it exudes out of me. So, you know, anyway, that's what I feel God is speaking to me through this passage. Um, yeah. The voice of God is particularly loud today. Anyway, that is day uh, 22. I'll see you tomorrow for um, more good word.